down. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may have read about how I plan to compete in the 181 class at the Tribute Meet on August 25th. In the For my past couple of meets, I haven't really cut all that much weight to make my 198 pound weight class. And, you know, that's been fun. I like being big. I, don't, I like not having to, you know, stress out about making weight. But at the same time, I do kind of enjoy big weight cuts in a, in a masochistic kind of way. And I'm also, I think I'm pretty good at them. I've done big weight cuts before. And they've always gone, in my opinion, pretty successfully. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited about the opportunity to drop a weight class, be a little bit more competitive, uh, hopefully put up equally big numbers on the platform. But I want to talk today about some of the things that when you're dieting and also training, what you can do to make sure that you continue to get stronger, at the very least, don't get weaker. I think a lot of people have the perception that if they're dieting, they're going to get weaker. And if you go in with that mindset, yeah, you're probably going to get weaker. But if you go in with the mindset that, hey, as long as I'm paying attention to my recovery and I'm adjusting my training appropriately, I can still make progress. So I'm going to show some of my training footage for this first week of meat prep. And as we go, I'll kind of explain how that works. So if you've watched the Unfuck Your Program series or if you've completed the Unfuck Your Program course, you know that there's three main variables that go into your training, volume, intensity, and frequency. Now, the combination of those variables determines your overall training stress. Training stress is important because in order to get stronger over the long period of time, you need to balance your amount of training stress with your amount of recovery. Your body has a limited amount of recovery resources, so the harder you train, the more you need to recover. Now, when you're dieting, your recovery resources are knocked down a notch, right? You don't get that extra food in, so you feel a little bit more tired, maybe a little bit more sluggish. And the, the ultimate um, uh, consequences of all that means you need to train a little bit more conservatively in order to keep that equation balanced. Now, I think where a lot of people go wrong, either they don't do that at all, or they make the mistake of making some huge change, thinking they need a whole different training program because they're dieting. Both those things are mistakes. I think it should be pretty obvious why it's a mistake to not make any adjustment to reflect the fact that you're dieting. But if you make a really big change and it doesn't work, right? You don't know why it didn't work. This goes back to the idea of small changes, again, one of the cornerstones of Unfuck Your Program. Now, the way to make these changes, in my opinion, you find which one of those variables, volume, intensity, and frequency, you find which one's your money maker. So for me, it's usually intensity. For other people, maybe volume, frequency, whatever, it doesn't matter. You wanna keep your money maker the focus, okay? So if I like training with high intensity and I do well on it, I'm gonna try and keep my intensity high even when I'm dieting. I'm gonna to have to cut back on frequency and volume to compensate for that. Now, it doesn't matter which variable, right? You're always going to have to cut back a little bit, but you're only going to cut back a little bit. Not only so that you know what's going on, but because as your diet, as your diet progresses, you're going to need to make more changes in order to maintain your recovery. Because the more and more weight you lose, the less and less recovery you're going to get from food. Okay? So that's the second reason you make a small change. That's so down the road, you can make another small change and continue to progress. So there are other ways that you can increase or decrease your training stress. So one is to prioritize, right? If you're a power lifter, you're always gonna prioritize the bench press, squat, and deadlift. If you're a bodybuilder, you might prioritize a weak muscle group, right? A lagging muscle group. But, and then you would cut back, if you're a power lifter, you cut back on the assistance exercises. If you're a bodybuilder, you cut back from your strongest muscle groups. But the main idea is that you keep your money maker, the focus, you don't take away from that unless it's absolutely necessary, okay? So all those things are gonna help you to decrease your training stress 
and help you balance that stress recovery equation. That's the secret to getting stronger over the long term, regardless of whether you're dieting or not. However, you can do things to improve your recovery as well, all right? I think that should be obvious, right? Let's take sleep. Sleep is a huge factor of recovery. So if you're dieting a lot and you can get a little bit more sleep, that's going to help you balance that equation even more. There's other stuff. Um, Rest and relaxation are huge. I harp on the benefits of meditation all the time. There's lots of things like this. Body work, massages, right? All these sorts of things that you can do to improve your recovery. As long as you're keeping that equation balanced, though, at the end of the day, you're going to continue to get stronger or at very least maintain your strength. Okay, regardless of the fact that, hey, I'm dieting. Now, there are limitations to this, right? If you're in some sort of starvation diet, it's not going to be the case, right? Your recovery is going to be so low that it's just not going to be possible. If you've been dieting for ages and ages, again, you're probably going to be so worn out that you're going to start to lose some strength. But as long as you're moderate, it's going to work pretty darn well. Okay, so just to recap, in order to continue to get stronger while you're dieting, you have to make sure that your training stress is balanced with your amount of recovery. Dieting decreases your recovery, so you also have to decrease your training stress. In order to decrease your strength, training stress, you make small changes to your program. You don't make some giant change. And as you continue to diet, you continue to make small changes so that you can keep that equation in balance. The small changes you want to take, not from your money makers, right? Whether it's volume, frequency, intensity, competition lifts, weak body parts, whatever. You want to take from the things that are least important to you, okay? So for powerlifting, it's probably accessory exercises. For bodybuilding, it's strong body parts. Whatever the case may be, you want to keep your most important things as high as possible, even while you're dieting. The other option you have is to improve your recovery. And while there are ways to do that, it tends to be a lot harder than it is to decrease your training stress. I will post in the comments below or in the description below, I'm going to post an article on my site that is going to explain this in a little bit more detail. It's going to lay it out if you prefer to read rather than listen. And if you have any questions, as always, please post them in the comments below. I'm going to continue to document my training as I go throughout meat prep. And I hope this is helpful for you. If you guys have other topics specifically related to either dieting, cutting weight, or training for meat that you'd like me to cover, please let me know so that I can focus on those in the future. As always, think strong, train hard.